Right, first off, I'd like to give special mention to Richard Rouse and Magic Man Fan Dylan for the super thanks they have both sent me. It really, really is appreciated and will certainly help towards future videos I made up. Thank you very much. Right, so this is the first round of 2022 Matrix Champs. The first round this year is at Tunnel Barn Farm. Now, I was a bit late getting there, so I got Lloydy to draw for me. And he hasn't disappointed. He's got me House 19, which is a lovely peg just after the bridge uh, by the spit. There's a nice little re-bed over. And my, my plan was always going to be to fish shallow to that re-bed. Now, I'd made a major mistake on the morning. I'd bought maggots and obviously I'd got casters. The maggots I'd had bagged, and I bought them Friday, bagged them up and put them in the fridge Friday, and I forgot to take them out Saturday. So I've gone to the venue with them still bagged up, and they just never came round. In fact, they never came round till tea time when I was in the pub, probably. So if anybody's ever tried catapulting stunned or dead maggots, they're not dead, them just... Uh, if you ever tried feeding them at catapult, it's just impossible. They just go everywhere. So I fish casters. It's my own fault, but hey ho, should still have a good, decent day on the caster. So anyway, my plan was obviously to fish caster over to that wee bed. I'd got the track line which I started with hard pellets, and I threw some of the maggots to my right down the edge which is quite deep, it's like three foot deep down there, or near enough three foot deep. And to start the match, to my left, I fed worm, worm and casters in a bit of peat and a piece of worm on the hook, just while I feed that caster line to get that peg built up. So it's still quite deep down to the left there, it's reed lined and you can't get really get tight in without doing some manipulation. I never got round to doing that to be honest, but like I say, my main attack was always going to be the caster shallow. Plus, right next to my tray, right down the side by the side of me, I've got a little bit of shallow water there, so I decided to throw cubes of meat there, and just see if I could see anything coming in there. Started on the worm, and I had a fish first chuck, which I thought was a great start. It wasn't a massive fish, just a little F1. And he knocked himself for me as well, bless him. And luckily the rig never tangled up either. So another worm on, was straight back down there with another little ball of peat with worms and casters in. There was obviously some micro pellets in there as well. It's a mixture of peat, micro pellets, chopped worm and casters. I'm just feeling a little ball every time I go in there. But after that first F1, all I could catch was little perch. And the thing about Tunnel Barn is, everything you hook at Tunnel Barn has got to be netted. It doesn't matter how small a fish it is, it's got to be netted. That's the rule, you stick by the rules. Simple as. So it wasn't long before I came off that. I had a quick look down the middle on the hard pellet. My intentions were to switch this line to maggot later on in the match. I was hoping my maggots would have come round by then. So on this line, I'm fishing a 4 by 12 F1 maggot float there with a strung out pattern, size 18 to 012s and a microband. I always use microbands on my 
fours and six mil pellets. Just the one fish on this line before going over onto the shallow line. So here comes a short kit with a shallow rig already attached. I carry all my shallow rigs in a top kit case already done up, ready to go. So once I've set all my other rigs up and got them all right, I just go in my top kit case and get all my shallow rigs out. I think I've got four or five out on the day. All set at different depths, obviously. Another thing about Tunnel Barn is you've got to have a four inch lash. So that's the distance between your pole tip and your float. It's got to be a minimum of four inches. So I've gone over, I've just gone straight down the hour and I've got me an F1 straight away. Happy days. Fishing bandy caster. And it virtually ripped the elastic out that one did. That's 11 euro slip that elastic. I'm looking around there because I'm pretty sure I just heard a plop off the side of my side tray and I think I've already lost a catapult. I had to dig around after the match. I think I lost two during the day. I've got a few out just in case because when you're fishing shallow, you can sometimes go through a few catapults. So I've got a few on my side tray and I definitely didn't put as many away as I got out. So I'm pretty sure I lost two. I know I lost at least one, that's for sure. So I've gone back over and I've missed a couple of bites straight away. So that's prompted me to come back and take a little bit off the depth. So I feel I'm fishing too deep. And I also got my mini butt section out so I can get that bit tighter into the reed bed. That fine adjustment on the on the depth worked a treat and I carried on catching. Some of them were a lovely stamp fish as well. Little too big to handle that one, so straight into the net. When I'm fishing bandy caster, I use a medium band, which enables you to just slide the caster into the band. Now, I've made a mistake here. I was, like I say, I was throwing meat down, right down in behind the side tray, right down to my left, and that was a bit of the meat just that's just hit the lens. So it stayed there for the duration of the match, which in effect made the footage off that camera unusable, which is a shame. But I've still got this rear camera going, so you can still see what's going on. 
it's nice and busy for a bit. Just feeding casters, going over, hooking one, shipping back, feeding, just repeating, carrying on. One a chuck. Nice and busy fishing. I'm just trying to shorter rig there as I still feel as if I'm fishing a bit too deep. So I'm down to the next step now, which is probably a couple of inches shallower, so as I can maintain that short lash. Still throwing pellets down the middle at the moment and maggots down that right hand edge. As you can see, it's just really good fishing, one a chuck at the moment. Some of them were quite small as well, to be fair, but it was still busy. Some really small stockies mixed in amongst the better fish. Just making sure I keep putting casters in to keep those fish in the upper layers. Some of you know, just me tapping the pole there. That's to create a bit of a noise on the surface right, right by my float. That can sometimes produce a, a rapid response and get a bite quick. Usually when you do that, they rip the elastic out. So it's something that you do occasionally in between feeding. Now I've took the dolly butt off and I've put the 14 and a half metre section on and pushed it a little further along the reed bed because it died off a little bit directly in front of me. I don't know why. They just backed off slightly. So I just pushed that little bit further and this got good for a while. With it being sighed onto the reed bed, I could get a bit tighter to the bank as well, a bit tighter into the reed bed. There was a straggly bit of reed bed that sat proud of the peg, so I had to hit them and Bang the pole left to try and get him away from that wee bed. It's nine times out of ten worked. There was the odd occasion where I've had a fish do me. I think it happened three times during the match. 
resulting in a couple of lost up glimpses over the day. Which isn't too bad, I suppose. So now I'm going in between the two lines. So I've dropped it shorter again now to the rebed in front of me just to keep bites coming. That fish almost did me in, in that straggly bit of rebed that sits proud of the, of the full rebed. Tried his best anyway. It's great fishing at the moment. You see me tapping the pole there with my catapult. The duck has turned up with its ducklings and it's them creating havoc over there. Obviously eating the casters that I've oversprayed into the rebed. And it absolutely ruined the fishing for a bit. I just couldn't get a bite while they were doing it. So I'm thinking the fish had pushed down in the water. I picked up the rig I got set up for fishing worm on the deck underneath what I was feeding. I've caught plenty of fish over the years doing this, so I thought I'd give it a try here as well. It was a bit of a mess on the bottom, to be fair, dead reeds and all that. But when I could get the rig in there, it's worth having a look though to see if there's anything down there. And I do get a fish there, but it's quite a small F1. Not ideal, to be honest. More or less a stocky. Well, I'll keep feeding those casters and just hope that it draws the fish back into the peg. I'm back on the shallow line now and I'm back to the side of the wee bed. And this fish has got me. Has he? No, I've got him. Tried his best that one. Turning my pole there, trying to trying to steer it in between the bushes at the back. It's a bit awkward. Wasn't too bad when I was fishing 12 metres, but with that extra section on, it means I've got to go that bit further into the bush behind me, in between the, the trees. Another nice stamp F1.
reason I haven't shipped back out is because I've just seen a swirl on my maggots when I've just thrown down the edge. So I thought I'd go and have me a quick look and see if I can catch a couple of fish there before I ship back across. It also acts to give that line a rest over. And if I can catch them on this line, I'll obviously catch them quicker because I haven't got as much power out. So a quick look to see what happens. And I catch a fish right away. Fairly decent stamp. But that was the only fish there, so back over to the original line and I'm back into fish again. That was a real little stocky, that one. I've been a decent spell again now. It might be a little bit smaller, but there's plenty of fish there. And the ducks are back creating havoc again. Great fishing this is. Can't beat shallow fishing for F1s. When it's going well, it's brilliant fishing. Can be one a chuck. It's going to be curling now, so I've got my jumper on. And I've switched the pellet line to maggots now. So it's time for a quick look, see if there's anything turned up there. And luckily there has. So I'll keep the casters going in over, and hopefully I can rotate to these two lines for a while. It'll keep me nice and busy.
the maggots still haven't come round, but I'm just about managing to get them tight enough on this short line. I wouldn't have been able to fish it any further, that's for sure. Nice little spell on the maggot short I had. Double red maggot on the hook. making sure that I maintain feeding that far line as well. It's just great fishing. Plenty of fish to be caught. Not massive, but plenty of them. With the odd better fish mixed in. Now, I've had a spell where it went a bit iffy. I stopped catching down the middle and I was getting some silly bites over, no matter what rig I tried. So I've just got a jigger rig out to try that and I cut it down to make it quite a short jigger. As I felt the fish were high in the water, I wasn't missing many bites, but I was missing more than I'd like to miss. So I thought I'd try the jigger to see if that had helped the situation. And to be honest, it was rubbish. So a couple of slaps and then follow the caster down. Just keep picking it up and letting it go back down. And if it's right, the first indication you'll get will be the elastic ripping out the pole. But that never worked. So I'm back on the short line and there's no fish there again. I'm catching tiny little perch and I've had a three quarter hour spell where I really struggled for a while. I couldn't catch on the caster. I couldn't catch down the middle. I tried the worm again. That never worked. Maggot to my right never worked. It just seemed like it was devoid of fish. And when I did hook a fish over, it did me in the wee bed, which wasn't ideal, all that commotion when you just got them going again. So this is well and truly stuck in the wee bed, this fish. So I thought, I'll ship it back out, let it have a bit of slack and see if it swims out. But it was obvious there was nothing on there. It got off and left me in the wee bed. So I've ended up having to pull for a break. Luckily it didn't break me, but the commotion can't have done the peg any good. Well never mind, keep feeding it and out they come back. Now, it was quite a while before I had another bite. Just can't get an indication anywhere at the minute. Just feels like the peg's devoid of fish at the minute. So 
So I decided to feed some more worm and try that again. Quick look back down the middle before I go on that. And the first fish I hook down the middle again, he's foul hooked and I lose him. It just seems like nothing's going right at the minute. Lost the fish over to the wee bed, I've now lost one down the middle. My head's starting to go because I felt, I felt I was in with a chance of a match win here and the pegs just, just fell apart on me or I fell apart on the peg, one or the other. Nothing seemed to be going right for a while. So, I'll try down the edge again on the worm, see if there's anything turned up down there. And that proved to be a waste of time. So back on the track line and I start catching again. I don't know what happened. I had a spell where I couldn't get a bite and if I did get a bite, I lost it. I lost that one in the wee bed over. I fell, looked one day in the middle. And then all of a sudden, I go back in down the middle and I start catching again. I go back over to the wee bed, I start catching again. It was bizarre to be fair. Had a good run in the last half hour. I used my third net for the last half hour and I put 19 pound in that net in the last 30 minutes. So the fish were back, but the three quarters of an hour before that point, I bet I didn't put two pound in the net. I just don't know what happened. I just couldn't get a bite. And like say, when I did hook something, something went wrong. So they just weren't having it right for that period of time. But then the last half hour was absolutely solid again. Half decent fish this one. Towards the end, it was just solid.
smaller fish on that line so give it a rest again get back over to the rebed back on the caster shallot and back into fish over there as well So the ducks are in the reed bed again. The fish didn't like that at all. Another tap there to try and attempt to bite. Cheeky little starling nicking me maggots look. And finish the match up back down the track again for another run of fish. So all in all a decent day's fishing. All but for that one three quarters of an hour spell where I just couldn't make anything work. When I felt that the peg was getting stronger, it just completely died on me. And I don't know what happened. And when I did hook something, something went wrong. And I came away really disappointed with myself. Because I felt I was on a peg that could have possibly won the match on the day. But a nice busy day's fishing. And when the scales turned up, this man here, Jimmy Brooks, told me he got £30. And I knew, I knew I'd beat Kieran to my right. And I was the first peg in our section. So my section went from peg 19 round to peg 2. Now, Peg 2 the day previous had won the Open match with £180. So, Jimmy was always favourite where he was. Now, he told me he got £30. He was obviously lying. But I took him at his word at the time. So, I felt happy days. Get the league off to a, start with, a good start with a section win. I've ended up with £99.15, and 15 ounces, just an ounce short of the ton. Kieran to my right weighed 60 odd pound and then there was a 30 odd pound. Jimmy Brooks weighed £119. So he went on to win the section. In fact, he won the match, which left me with the section by default. But I come away really disappointed because of that one little spell where I couldn't put nothing in the net. I was only just short of £20 short of winning the match. Not only that, there was a couple of £103 weights that made the frame as well. I should have had that. But with hindsight, maggots would have been a better way to go. My own fault because I never did no own work on the venue. I haven't been there for a while. And although I've had a great day's fishing, it should have been a bit better than that.
but still a decent start to the league. Larford next round, so hopefully we can improve on a on a second on that one. So if you enjoyed watching that, give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more like this, please subscribe. Cheers.